it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. Well, folks, what's the story? In this video, we're going to look at another application of differentiation, and it is using differentiation to determine the maximum and minimum turning points of a function. So you could be given a function or a graph, and you'd be asked to find the maximum and the minimum turning points, and you'd have to be able to say which one's the max, which one's the min. So what are the steps involved here? First up, you find the coordinates of the turning points. So we would have seen that process in a previous video. After that, we find the second derivative d2y over dx squared. With that, we sub the x coordinate of your turning points into the second derivative. And this will be the teller of whether it is a maximum or a minimum turning point. If the second derivative is greater than zero at this point, that means you have a minimum turning point at that point. Or if the second derivative is less than zero at this point, it means you have a maximum turning point. So let's throw a question up and see how this is applied. Here, I'm asked to find the coordinates of the maximum and the minimum turning points of y equals x cubed plus x squared minus x plus seven. Now, we know how to find the turning points. That is, we find the first derivative, we let it equal zero, we solve for x, and then whatever x values we get, we sum it back into the original function to find the corresponding y values. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now, here I'm at a point where I have the two turning points. We've seen this in a previous video. So I have a turning point at the coordinates a third and 184 over 27 and minus one and eight. Now what I need to do is I'm going to show you how we can determine which one is the maximum turning point and which one is the minimum turning point. So let me take these turning points down. We'll move on to step two to help identify which of these turning points is the maximum and which is the minimum. With that, I'm going to sub x equals one third and x equals minus one into my result for the second derivative. Subbing my first x coordinate into the second derivative, I get a result of four. Now the determining factor is if this is less than or greater than zero. If the second derivative is greater than zero at this point, you have a minimum. So greater than zero minimum, counterintuitive there. Alternatively, if your second derivative is less than zero at this point, it's a maximum, so less than zero maximum. Now I got a result of four. So is four less than or greater than zero? Four is greater than zero. And because it's greater than zero, I'm at this point here, which tells me I have a minimum turning point at x equals one third and 184 over 27. So because the second derivative at the point one third is equal to four, which is greater than zero, it means we have a minimum. Let's check out the other coordinate for x equals minus one. Here, I get a result of minus four, and minus four is less than zero. And because minus four is less than zero, I'm on to my last point here. If the second derivative is less than zero at this point, it's a maximum. So this implies I have a maximum turning point at that x coordinate of minus one and the y coordinate of eight. So that's the job here, folks. You need to know your steps. You get your turning points, then you take them. You find the second derivative. You sub each of your turning points, the x coordinate of those, into your second derivative. If the second derivative is greater than zero at that point, you have a minimum on your hands. If the second derivative is less than zero at that point, you have a maximum turning point on your hands.